This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program here in America that you, the viewer, can express your concerns, tell your story on the child welfare and family court system. I'm Dennis Lawrence. Next to me is Maria Malin. You know, recently we had um, attended a rally in Lansing, and we're going to go back there today. I want to thank Adina Caro and Alexander Cervantes for... Uh, putting on this great rally in Lansing, and we had a good time there. That was really a great time, Dennis, um, being around people that who share common goal as far as trying to get the corruption out of the system, um, and, and also people who want to see the change in family court that we wish to see. Up first, we have Jamie Venser. Jamie had her children taken for medical neglect. CPS never checked for any brittle bone disease. Let's go to the Capitol Lawn back in Lansing. Who is facing charges for something the man didn't do just because he was in the Marine Corps? It's my one-year-old Zeta. Zeta stands for the lucky one. I was told I can never have kids. Never. I lost my chances when I lost my right ovary. My husband did everything in his power to make sure we had Zeta. And I am so grateful for this old girl every day. But what breaks my heart the most, so our second one came a lot easier than what we had anticipated. She of course was not planned but that doesn't mean we don't love her just as much as Zeta this is my almost six month old her name is Adeline her name stands for noble and that she is she's very noble they took her when she was almost two months old the day she was born I complained and I complained I took her to her family doctor I took her to Oakland Hospital in Marshall and they told me she's consolable go home if she develops a fever bring her back I couldn't touch my daughter's legs or change her diaper without her screaming like somebody was murdering her and it hurt me so bad not knowing what was wrong with her and then I discovered we have a vitamin deficiency, we have rickets, and we have signs of Ellis-Danlos Syndrome. And CPS and our family court judge has denied all of our requests to get this little girl medical testing. They have dropped them off at my sister's home. They promised her we'd start your foster care license. They haven't done that yet. My sister has had my children almost three months. Because she doesn't have that foster license, she cannot get my children tested. What hurts me the most is three times a week, an hour each day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I have to undig Zeta's claws from out of my back because she's crying because she can't come home with her mommy. And now, my six-month-old is starting to do the same thing when I have to put her in a stranger's van three times a week. Now they're worried about my daughter's development. When they took Zeta, Zeta knew sign language. 
Not even two yet. New sign language. She can't do that now. She doesn't recognize it. What breaks my heart even more is that their father, their biological father, can't even touch them, can't talk to them, can't kiss them, nothing. Man served four years in the Marine Corps in a different country. For their families to have all the freedoms and liberties in the world, just to come home, for them to rip his two beautiful little girls out of his arms. They physically took my daughter out of his arms after I took her to a well child checkup. Still complaining of the same thing. He sent us to Bronson Southwest. They never used an infant board when they did x-rays. But I had a prior CPS case that was open and for it to be closed I had to take her to an emergency room Adeline here I had to take Adeline to an emergency room and have her fully checked out when we got to Borges Hospital in Kalamazoo it took five people to hold down not even a full two month old five people to hold my baby down to give her a catheter then it took three more people to hold her down to take blood from her the x-ray technician didn't strap her down either grabbed her by her ribs while her head flopped to her chest on April 11th the reason why they took my children is because the allegations were Adeline had multiple fractures in different healing stages 16 fractures in the ribs one leg fracture one arm fracture and two skull fractures and they refuse to enter Borges Hospital medical records into court. They refuse to even take one glimpse at Borges Hospital to see if they may have been the cause of my child's injuries. And you know what? I lost my family. Because the day after the state cop had questioned us, I had to sign my husband into the Veterans Hospital for being suicidal. And I didn't know he was suicidal, and he became suicidal because they took his little girl physically out of his arms. I lost my family. And I'm here because not only am I trying to be my daughter's voice because CPS told me her voice doesn't matter. She doesn't have a voice. And I'm telling you right now, she may be six months old, but she does have a voice. Every child has a voice. They may not be able to use it, but we can. And I just want to make sure, I, I would like, I don't know where I would start, but if somebody can help me, I would like to, to, to try to get two laws proposed in the state of Michigan. The first one, I believe every parent that is a strong parent and that wants to fight for their child should have that right to do so. Michigan is not a state that allows parents to fight to get their parental rights back. Every parent deserves their day. And I believe the strong ones that are, are dedicated will make it to the end. The weak ones will phase out before them. But the ones that make it to the end, they deserve their kids. They deserve their life, their soul. This is my heartbeat. When they took my children, they basically signed my death warrant. If they end my parental rights, I have no reason to live. None. And I love my husband to death. But you know what? my children have more love than any human that walks this earth. The second law I would like to try to get into the state, I would like to name it Addie's Law. Any child that is taken from their parent with any type of broken bone or the parent has any type of concern of any type of medical problem, I don't care if they have a sneeze, it should be state mandatory that they get the medical testing that they deserve as an American citizen. That's what my husband fought for. Just because they're under 18, that doesn't mean that they don't have rights, along with any other child that has been taken. And I just wanna help everyone. I wanna, I wanna reach out to everyone because if I can help one person, then I did my job. If one person can help me, they're not helping me. I'm not here for me. I'm not here for my husband. I'm here for my little girl who I don't know. 
and my other little girl who I have to cry and rip away from me and say, I'm sorry, you can't come home with mommy. No child and no mother should feel that pain. None. So I, was, I hope everybody achieves their, their goal and that's your children. Thank you. Medical neglect. I'm hearing these stories all the time. Um, one, one of the most popular stories was the Justina Politer story out of Boston. But I'm hearing these all the time in Michigan. I receive a call about once a month on medical neglect. Um, I, one that pretty much hit close to home uh, was the uh, was from Grand Haven, Michigan, uh, the Sarah Wagiski Heisiga story. Uh, Maria, you were a little close to this uh, woman, weren't you? Um, yes, I've known Sarah very well for many, many years. We work um, very closely. Um, she's done a lot with the missing, and I do a lot with domestic violence and with the court corruption so it, there's always been close contact there and working together to try to help people she did end up winning her case her and her husband but it cost the children a lot of trauma and it did cost them their entire life savings to fight it now from one of our whistleblowers here in michigan uh, uh she was an ex cps worker and she said uh, C CPS, instead of proving families innocent like they used to try to do and, and getting to the bottom of the allegations, that they find it is much easier to prove a parent unfit the present way the laws are written. Uh, next up from July 27th, Raleigh, this story made state headlines. And it's a medical marijuana story. Uh, you heard of baby Bree? Well, here is her mother, Maria Green. So I'm Maria Green, and um, this is baby Bree. And I don't know um, how many of you are aware of our story from last year. Um, I'm the founder of the Free Brie Foundation. Um, Brie was taken at six months old, was forced to stop her breastfeeding, um, and just ripped out of my arms. And we had to fight for six weeks. We finally got her back. And um, the whole thing was over whether or not I was allowed to use the medicine that the doctors said I should use. And that's it. And so, um, you know, the biggest problem that I see in the CPS system is that if any other person violated a law or ignored a law in order to take a child, they would be prosecuted with kidnapping. And that's what these judges are doing. They are violating laws and ignoring them in order to take children away. They're not charged with kidnapping. In fact, they can't even be sued for it. They have immunity. So they don't care. They just continue kidnapping our children because there is no consequences for them. And so we need to come together and stop judicial immunity, make them accountable to their actions. And um, I just wanna encourage everybody, keep an eye on the bills that are coming through the House and the Senate. Um, there's one right now that talks about uh, videotaping, mandatory videotaping for children who are uh, interviewed by a CPS worker. That needs to go through, and in fact, that needs to be expanded. Um, and also, I just want to let you guys know, um, part of my Free Brief Foundation is that I started a 
uh, event every Mother's Day because I was really, um, at Mother's Day this year, I, I was still missing my son, who's uh, seven now, and I was really having a hard time emotionally with Mother's Day coming up, knowing that I wasn't gonna have my baby with me. And so, um, so I started an event um, called Up, Up and a Love, and we get balloons, we write messages to our children who are not with us on Mother's Day, and we let them go in balloons. And it, it's kind of, I mean, obviously our kids are never going to actually get those messages in person, but I believe that, you know, if we send our messages of love in those balloons to them on Mother's Day, they know it and they can feel it in their hearts. So I um, encourage you to uh, find us on Facebook and um, learn about that event for next year. We may have expand it to Father's Day next year as well. So you want to say anything? <laughs> Uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> We're seeing quite a few of these uh, cases, medical marijuana, and um, we all might have some different views on this, but if it is legal and the kids are still being taken care of, uh, my thought is it's nothing different than um, taking your pain medication. Maria, you, any of your thoughts? Well, Dennis, I have, I, ha, I have never really supported the medical marijuana because I've always believed that they do have other medication out there. But something that I've really noticed recently that I'm seeing a lot of is, is these young children that are having seizures. Um, the oils that are in the marijuana are helping seizures when no other medication that is on the market have ever helped these kids before. And I think in a, definitely in some situations, it can be used medicinally. Um, I definitely don't agree with any type of medical marijuana or anything else that could potentially alter your mindset and jumping into a car and driving with children in the car and that type of thing. But as far as treating people, some really swear by the fact that it's the only thing that works for them. I am not going to sit here and say that they're wrong because that's not my body. That's not, you know, that, that's them and how they are feeling. We're going to be right back with our program right after this message. I see never. I see never. Kidnappers. Kidnappers. Samatil County. Kidnappers. I see never. Child Protective Services don't protect children. They kidnap kids from their parents making millions. Families devastated. Kids segregated. That's how they make the money. Keep the kids separated. In a foster home, placed in a sanity, child protective service is a crime against humanity. Legal kidnapping violate parental rights. Children around the world being sold as merchandise. San Mateo County, home of the clan. Keep the child in the system as long as they can. Up in foster homes so they can stay employed. Kids being drugged, raped, and destroyed. CPS social worker lying through her lips. Pretend to protect the child, but she placed them at risk. They cover up the evidence and lie in reports. Hold your child hostage or dependent of the court. Child protective services, crooked and corrupt. Kidnapping kids and breaking families. What they doing to our children is serious. Can somebody come investigate the damage? Child protective services, crooked and corrupt. Kidnapping kids and breaking families. 
What they doing to our children is yes, yeah. Yeah. Get somebody yeah. come investigate some idiots yeah. yeah. Childish merchandise, nothing more, nothing less So they can steal money from the federal government Attorney for the child, man you burn in hell What they need to do is place your crooked ass in jail Claim you represent the child, you the devil in disguise You the main racketeer to keep the children traumatized You go against the parents and abuse your position And push for adoption, keep the child in the system You exploit your children and place them at risk Separate them from their parents, it's your real intent And then you paint a picture that foster home was best But cover up in court the abuse and neglect You're like a terrorist, causing children trauma You need to be investigated, you're worse than on some of the best interests of the child is not the real motivation The money sent adoption, kidnap and exploitation Child protective services, crooked and corrupt Kidnapping kids and breaking families up what they doing to our children is insidious Can somebody come investigate the idiots? Child protective services, crooked and corrupt Kidnapping kids and breaking families up What they doing to our children is insidious Can somebody come investigate the idiots? Everywhere you look at just the same old song Kids being viciously ripped from their home Can you imagine the pain unfolded? The pain the parent feel when their child is stolen They stereotype me and stigmatize me Former slavery, supervising me like I was in prison. A once a week phone call, once a month visit. Attorney for the child, you are disgraced. The children knew what you was doing, they spit in your Kidnapper. face. And in the courtroom, you can't defend yourself Kidnapper. as they oxen up your child for money and Kidnapper. wealth. That success rate is less than 1%. Kidnapper. Children being exploited by a bunch of lunatics. Kidnapper. Legal kidnapping, modern day slavery, wanna steal a child. The guy gave to me, child protective services, crooked and corrupt. Kidnapping kids and breaking kids. What they do to our children is kids. a city, yes. Can somebody come investigate me? Yes, child protective services, crooked and corrupt. Kidnapping kids and breaking families. What they do to our children is kids. a city, yes. Can somebody come investigate me? Yes, child protective services, crooked and corrupt. Kidnapping kids and breaking families. What they doing to our children is serious. Can somebody come investigate and deal with Child protective services, crooked head robber, kidnapping kids, and break families up. What they doing to our children is serious. Can somebody come investigate and deal with Child protective services, crooked head robber, kidnapping kids, and break families up. What they doing to our children is serious. Can somebody come investigate and deal with Child protective services, crooked head robber, kidnapping. What they doing to our children is serious. Can somebody come investigate the city? Yeah. Child protective services, crooked and kidnapper, kidnapping kids and breaking families. What they doing to our children is serious. Can somebody come investigate the city? Yeah. Child protective services, crooked and kidnapper, kidnapping kids and breaking families. What they doing to our children is serious. Can somebody come? If you would like to be a guest on Silent Voices, contact us at mipiranorights at gmail.com. That's mipiranorights at gmail.com. Let's just shift gears for a moment and take a look at baby LK. He's going to share with us the top 10 greatest lawsuits. <laughs> Good evening. Tonight's category, Baby LK's Top 10 Favorite Lawsuits Against the Child Protective Industry of All Time. Number 10. In September of 2007, a 12-year-old girl was awarded $788,000 from the state of Florida. This after being molested by a child protective investigator named Lewis Templeton when she was 5. Then in April of the following year, the state of Florida files its own lawsuit in an attempt to get out of pain. Number 9. In January of 2010, the parents of the child who was raped by a foster child they took in settles for $775,000. This because the Office of Children and Youth in Erie County, Pennsylvania, places a sexually abusive child in their home without warning them of his past. 
Number 8. The mother of Tyler and Ariana Payne settles for one million dollars. This because the Arizona CPS sent them to their doom. Their father, Christopher Payne, was later sentenced to death for starving them. Number 7. In 2007, a mentally retarded 15-year-old who was impregnated by her foster father wins a settlement of $1.2 million. Of course, pending an act of the legislature, Florida held that up too. Number 6. In March of 2010, 11 kids who were forced to sleep in cages by their foster parents reached a $1.2 million settlement with a county in Ohio. Lawyers for the children claimed that social workers missed several red flags that should have indicated the children were in danger sooner. The foster parents argued that the kids were special needs and this was necessary for the safety of themselves and the other kids in the home. And get this, prior to their conviction for felony child abuse and endangerment, these idiots tried to reach a compromise with the state to get the kids back. Number 5. An Alaskan boy is awarded $1.5 million in a failure to protect case after workers ignored several abuse complaints. Number 4. In Washington, two women win a $2 million settlement based on the claim that they were sexually abused in a foster home when they were five. These allegations were never proven and the foster parents were never criminally charged. <coughs> Number 3. Also in Washington, $6 million was awarded in the Tyler DeLeon case. Carol DeLeon tortured and starved several children in two states and Tyler DeLeon died just before his seventh birthday weighing only 28 pounds. In March of 2010, Carol DeLeon walked out of prison after serving three years of a six-year sentence. <coughs> Number 2. Eight children in Washington won a $10.5 million settlement for being placed with a foster molester who is now doing a 26-year jail sentence. And the number one top 10 lawsuits against the child protective industry of all time is Marissa Amora, who suffered permanent brain damage while in foster home, wins a $26.7 million settlement from the state of Florida. Of course, in keeping with Florida's history of non-payment, the girl has yet to receive her money. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next time, this is Baby LK, over and out. I want to thank you, the viewers, for tuning in this week. You can catch us next week, same time, same channel. Until next week, my friends, remember, your, your voice can, can make, make the difference. difference.